Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over series 22 of LEGO's collectible minifigures. There are 12 different figures to collect here. Each one comes in a blind bag like this in the standard format. And I'm going to go through each of these one by one. In no particular order, this one's called the Troubadour. And many people are referring to it as simply the Bard. Speaking of tossing a coin to their Witcher or something like that, I don't know what that's all about. I don't know what that's about at all. Uh, this one is really good, obviously, for fans of medieval stuff and especially the classic forest men because of the continuation of that hat mold there. I believe the, the small feather is new in dark magenta, that color. The base color for this figure is blue. The legs are dual molded into dark brown down at the base, printed around the sides. The arms are dark blue, also with print around the sides. And the loot is very nicely printed and done in a medium nougat color. Just really, really fine printing on that. Really good production value on that. Also new here is the, uh, the, the printed pearl gold tile one by one with the crown emblem on it, which has the metallic, you can see the shine there, the, the metallic gold on it as well. And there's a spare. I figure this one is somewhat compatible thematically Possibly. They call this the forest elf. I would call it just acorn boy because really the theme here is acorn. I mean, the new headgear piece, the print for the belt buckle there, and then the print across the belt with the oak leaves and then the oak leaf cut for the soft cape piece here. And more continuation of the printing around the back with the, the knapsack there also having an acorn print on it and more oak leaves. And underneath here, there's an alternate face. It's not too different. Both of them are both, you know, just happy, smiling. This one's smiling a little bit more. Speaking of smiling, I believe this is a new print for the, uh, the, the cap of the little toadstool kind of thing over here with the face on it. So that's pretty nice. It's built on a fez base rather than a regular one by one uh, uh, either cylinder or cone as they've done before. So it just gives it a wider base. This is the Robot Repair Tech, and I kind of love this. I am biased in favor of this because of the source material. I mean, it's, it's made up, but all those pieces can be used for different things to represent a small mech or a robot or just all sorts of sci-fi related things. I think this is the first time we've gotten this arm piece in the yellow color like that. And there is printing on the head. I mean, there's more detail on this than it needs to have on the, on the main figure, including printing along the sides of the legs. But what print is there is very nice. Also new color and uh, print for the, the welder's helmet. And off to the right is a small robot because they could. It's nice, you know, it has another new print this time for the eyepieces there and underneath here, check this out. Yeah, nice. Big old smile for a robot face. And the other side just shows the, the power level when it's going to need to recharge. Uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely super, super biased <laughs> for this one. It's, it brings me great joy. I also really like this one, even though it's completely, completely different from an entirely different world. This goes off into fantasy. They call this one the Night Protector. I've been referring to it as the Moon, uh, moon Warrior, but it's just really, really nicely done. Very striking. Typically, I don't like this color scheme with the with the purple and the gray. They've done that before with the monsters for Nexo Knights uh, Series Two. But all the printing here is is sharp. It's just so well done, and the shield is really good. The new color for the trans purple. It's not trans blue. I think it's just a trans purple. It's just a, it's a little bit off because uh, it's a softer material, so it's actually done a little bit differently than usual for the sword there. Uh, the, um, the colors don't match up fully, but dual molded arms with the printing, the new teal color for this hairpiece, and then underneath there, there we go, an alternate face, which is very nice. Look at that. Very, very charming. I like the, I like the dots. Finely detailed, again, well produced. The, the dots on the face are done with uh, silver. So it's a bright metallic silver. When the light hits it just right, you can see it's kind of sparkly, kind of like glitter. Speaking of which, well, here's the figure skating champion with lots of sparkly glitter printed on the torso of this one and a little bit on the face as well. And then over to this arm. 
only the right arm. Now this one looks very different in real life than it did in the original official pictures for this series that were first released. They, they, they made it look like it was going to be in azure tones, possibly even dark azure, but it's the, the pale kind of uh, uh, powder blue color, the light royal blue which you know has been around for quite some time it's just very different but it makes this compatible with the old one from series was it four or five this over here so now we have both male and female versions of the same they will go together really well if you want to put them onto the same team and each of those came with a pair of the uh the, the ice skates in just a regular metallic molded silver color i think the the other figure was the first one to include that piece at all. So it's nice to see this as a continuation and kind of closing that, that loop up. And it also does come with the action posing piece down below. No alternate face for this one. The Bird Watcher, I think, is one of the most highly anticipated figures from this series because it comes with the brand new bird mold that is a toucan. And it is a very good toucan. It is, if I'm not mistaken, triple molded. So the black is one color of plastic for most of the body. The white of the chest is another color. And then for the beak and going back to the eyes is the is a, yet another plastic. And that's the flame yellowish orange or key orange color. Everything else is done with print. It looks very good. Just fits onto a single stud. You know, it has an anti-stud at the base. The, um, the tail sticks down a fair amount. So you need to have this elevated above a surface or hanging off the back. Comes with a single bamboo piece in lime green. And then looking at the figure, she has full height legs, dual molded, printed, uh, front and back. Well, excuse me, printed on the front and on the sides. And then her arms are dual molded. The dark green color, I believe is new for the binoculars there. Dual molded, <laughs> Dual molded uh, hair piece, hair and headgear piece with the teal. I think that's a new color combo for that one as well. She also has a print over on this arm, which is a smartwatch, which is showing, uh, I think it's showing direction and distance. I don't know if it's hooked up to a GPS. Might not be looking at that quite correctly right now, but definitely a smart watch. And an alternate face here, got the, the beauty mark that you can see the print on the side of the legs a little bit better. Beauty mark for both, and here's where she has identified the, uh, the bird and is just super happy to be looking at it through the binoculars. And also comes with the, the messenger bag in a dark pink color there. Here's some more wildlife. It's a trash panda, AKA raccoon. Well, no, it's not. It's a person in a raccoon suit. Raccoon costume fan, they call this one. Comes with just a regular green colored trash can because trash panda. Uh, and then a white colored bag or a sack with no printing on it. The legs, as you can see, are dual molded there. The tail piece, which we've gotten a bunch of times in different colors, is unprinted here. Just a single color of the light bluish gray for it. And underneath there, there's the face, which is pretty charming. It's a very nice face. This is a nice face as well. Just a subtle difference between the two. Nice surprise in this set though, or this that comes with this figure, a hair piece. Yeah, that's, that's included. That's included in the bag and it's included with every one of them. I don't think that was advertised in advance of the release. And it's, it's a wonderful surprise to get two versions of, of headgear with a collectible minifigure series Figure. And I hope that they will continue to do things like that for more and more figures in all different series, all different themes. This one's called Space Creature and is interesting. It's different as the first ever teal colored classic ray gun uh, and has printing on the sides of the legs and the arms. You got the metallic printing in there. Classic space torso in purple. Hopefully they will be doing the rest of the pieces that you need to turn this into a full, well, or just releasing a full uh, purple colored classic space or neo classic space, preferably modern classic space revival version of, of a astronaut figure. Got the thing on the back. I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, it suggests that it can explode. So watch out for that with the print on it, but I don't know if it's supposed to be a weapon or a power source or what. Maybe use your imagination is the intent there. Now check this out underneath here. So this is a relatively rubbery piece. That's what the head 
looks like in its in its entirety. So there's more of the big open smile than you can see when the rest of the headgear piece is on. But turn this around, there's a different version of it. So if you looked at this from from the other side, uh, you know, rotate that around, it just makes a different, a slightly different face. It's like a, a little bit less of a smile. Still a smile. This one, this one looks a little bit more believable to me. Like I can see the full face and it just connects with my brain a little bit, but a little bit better. The color for the stud at the end of the ray gun there is trans bright green, as is the printed headpiece on the back. This one's called the Snow Guardian. There's a bunch of stuff to look at here. I think they're going for an upper like Arctic uh, Mongolian, ancient Mongolian sort of appearance, but suppose you could see this as being a, a traditional native upper North American warrior. Um, I really think they're going more for Mongolia here, but ultimately I think this is mostly intended to be made up, a little bit fantasy, but the arms are dual molded with sand blue and white. There's also printing there. The legs are dual molded with white and dark blue with sand blue printing on there as well. Um, the hands are dark blue, nice sword with a nice fullering going down the center, nice pommel on it, printed shield as well. Uh, the new headgear piece, interesting printing for the head, which has just a little bit of stubble of white stubble as well. Uh, getting this part, I keep forgetting what this fluffy collar piece is, is officially called, but getting that in white is nice. Nice printing around the back of the torso there as well. And then, oh yeah, there is an animal, isn't there? It uses the husky mold, but this one is not printed or is not molded with white and dark gray. It's molded white and light gray. And then the eyes are an exclusive, I believe that's dark azure. I think that represents a wolf or is intended to represent a wolf, not a dog in this case. That's, that's, that's my belief. I, I might not be interpreting the designer's intent correctly there, but that's what I see, especially with those eyes. Um, but really nice printing for the belt around the front as well. And then taking this off, see there's a little bit more to the face print and there is an alternate face as well. So much going on with this figure and its accessories. Here is Chili Costume Fan. I personally am generally not a big fan of this type of figure. However, that Chili piece, that Chili Costume piece, looks very, very useful to me. And I can only imagine that at least 50% of people, who out, people out there who have Chili's restaurants uh, in their small Lego display or big Lego display are going to take this and add pieces to the inside of it to make it into a more complete Chili. It's the closest thing that we've gotten uh, officially. It's a pretty good mold. It's only single molded with the red. The stem is printed on with green, but it's printed pretty well. It comes with the milk there, which is important. You know, you take something hot, you want to get some milk real quick. Underneath, check this out. So a good face print, nice torso print as well, which is normally not even seen. Like that's a, a genuinely useful torso print just on its own. This is the, the other print, a very different for the, for the head, a very different look for this one. And then there's another surprise with this figure. This one also comes with a hairpiece. Sweet. And it's in a beautiful bright red color. It just stands out so much. I really like getting uh, just very obvious hair color. I think I'm put this offset just a little bit like very obvious hair color pieces from from lego uh you know we've gotten so much over the decades that looks so similar and it's great to add in some some fantastic contrast so this is just a bonus to me wheelchair racer here is pretty deluxe with some unexpected recolorings of the standard lego bicycle wheel at the front there the the wheel portion of it has only been done in clear before, as I understand it. This one is trans light blue. And then the wheelchair wheel, this is the same style that we've gotten since the wheelchair mold was introduced. Well, that's been recolored to a solid black. That's gonna be ridiculously useful for so many people doing custom things. Um, so it's black on black and works on just a regular axle. Notice that those are 
camber it in a little bit so that the hands will reach and that's also accurate to the design of a racing uh, a racing wheelchair the figure itself has dual molded arms the hands are teal the the racing style of helmet is a brand new mold you know more aerodynamic vented style of helmet that we've not gotten before and then also has the the metal around the neck there which is a piece we've gotten a bunch of times in the past but it's nice to get another there's also a spare you got the printing on the side the not adidas style of <laughs> of, uh, of of logo for the made up sport uh, you know company brand that lego <laughs> lego first introduced a little bit before they announced their actual connection with adidas but yeah this is uh there's just a lot going on with this um, and a lot of a lot of pieces to want to collect and I definitely want to see that helmet or as us Americans say Adidas last but certainly not least they call this horse and groom okay is the horse is is not really a horse it's a baby horse so it's a foal and it is too cute it's too cute it's absolutely perfect in its design uh, the mold could not be better it just really captures the the youthful essence of a foal it's just you know full of energy head is back the little mane is is sticking up just everything about that is absolutely perfect i think the the, the mold the the sculpting could not be better it's dual molded this one's dark orange surely we'll be getting these in different color schemes in the future dark orange with the dark brown colored mane the human figure there has a uh, new print for the the torso and the arms are also printed to go with that plaid it's dark green on sand green the legs are mini sized leg or excuse me mid sized legs so they're able to articulate dark blue color there she's got braces on i knew that was going to happen everything is going as planned <laughs> it wasn't really attached there wanted to keep them together but there is an alternate face here as well uh with the the mouth closed a little bit of freckling going on there so much better than the first lego figures to ever have freckle freckles remember those with the three dots it looked really bad it looked like the the kid had had just like uh smallpox or something but this this looks much more healthy and believable and and normal good uh good headgear piece as well but uh i think the star of the show here is definitely that full Overall, I'm pretty happy with a lot of stuff here, and particularly a lot of individual components. And that tends to be the way that I view these. I'm not massively into entire minifigures myself, but I'm a big fan of individual parts that are specialized and, and particularly interesting and different and diverse. And thus, I really like the new animals, especially the foal and the toucan, the hair pieces, you know, recolorings of stuff really like the robot technician over here and also the the horse uh what do they call her groomer the the groom horse and groom yes uh, just everything about that figure i think is good between the the bendable mid-sized legs and the new plaid shirt or torso and also the hair piece like all that is good i also found this to be a very special character i would love to see an entire theme come out of this like let this be the teaser for an, for a whole new something almost like Lego's Elves was Lego's Elves series uh, that that grew out of the Friends line, but more for minifigs and with a little bit more battle focus. Although it doesn't need that, but this, that's kind of what I see here. Just my own personal thoughts, but yeah, a, a bunch of good stuff here. I will say this though, I don't feel the value yet with the collectible Marvel minifigure series, the first one they came out with, I finally felt like, okay, I might soon be okay with the $5 per figure price point. With these, I, I'm not okay with that. So this is kind of going in the wrong direction value-wise. They really need to step their game up significantly from, from this for me to be happy with that price. These, I think, need to be like four bucks tops and I don't want to give more than that of course I had to because I had to get these figures to review for you <laughs> but just telling you my thoughts about how I feel their their pricing is at this time 
step it up, make them at least as good as the Marvel ones, and then we'll talk. Let me know what you think, though, and if you have any favorites among these, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.